Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4BMG HOA Ham. I recently had the privilege of doing an introductory video on the SA1, the new SWR analyzer recently introduced by Chameleon and Tenna. Within days of that video and it going live on their website, all the inventory vaporized into thin air and I believe Chameleon immediately reached out and started manufacturing a second batch. As I understand, it's in transit to their warehouse now and should be available on their website soon. They reached out to me and said, Bob, there's some new functionality. We'd like you to take a look at it. So today that's what we're going to do. I'm going to download some software live. We're going to see if we can figure it out together. It's some connectivity to our PC hardware so we can do some plotting. Before we go there, many of you did not see the original video, so you don't quite understand the cost of this, where it fits in with all the competition out there and what the specific use case is. This focuses on one thing very well, and that's its use case. And let me roll that video in and demonstrate if you already saw it, you want a refresher, go ahead and watch. If you don't, then just go to this spot in the video and you'll see the new content since the original introduction. I've been testing this for Chameleon for the last several weeks, and it just went for sale on their website today. It covers 1.6 through 160 megahertz or 160 meters through 2 meters. It'll come with this pouch so you can keep the unit protected while you put it in your go bag or whatever you store your gear in. It comes with an adapter so you can go from BNC over to your SO239. The unit itself just simply has an on off switch on top. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And the instructions on this are so simple, so simple that they're printed right here. Here is the instruction manual. Rotate to select frequency, tap to select the digit, hold to toggle light. Well, we'll toggle the light right now because it's going to wash out the screen. You can see it really good when you're looking at it, but that camera up there can't capture that light. Just hold and the light will go off again. Let me zoom in and show you how to operate it here. Okay, let's see if we can figure out these complicated instructions. Rotate to select frequency. Well, look at that. You rotate and it selects the frequency. Tap to select digit. You can see there's a cursor that moves anytime I tap the dial and it will just keep moving until I stop tapping the dial. And then I turn the dial to change the frequency. And it's as simple as that. We'll do a basic comparison of this analyzer to some others that I own. We'll compare price and features, and then you can decide if this fits into your particular use case. I'll talk about how I've been using this in the shack to tune my F-Loop 2.0, which is 30 feet above me in the attic space, using that remote loop tuner so I can operate my FX4CR. And then we're going to take it outside and, hey, why don't we hook it up to a coil antenna. How about the Cha PRV portable resonant vertical? Of course, you can use this on any antenna. It doesn't need to be a chameleon antenna. Go ahead and use this analyzer with your Wolf River coil, your G Gable radio, a coil antenna, your super antenna. And I know there are more antennas out there that you would want to use this with. Other than those I've named, you can use it on a wire antenna, any antenna that you're trying to get a quick read on your SWR. And that's where this excels. It's just honed in on the simple reading of your SWR. So what we're about to experience is just a really overly simplistic view of cost and features on these items, and I'm admitting that it's an oversimplified view. For the experienced amateur radio operator, you already know what's going on here, you know what a tiny SA Ultra does, and you're watching this video because it's a new piece of gear. You haven't seen it before, we all like new gear. If you're a new amateur radio operator, you may just be vaguely familiar with this equipment. So, overly simplistic view. The Tiny SA Ultra can measure SWR. It can do way more than that. There are a lot of other items that it measures, parameters and features. It's a valuable piece of equipment. It runs about $240 retail today. Most people view this as a shack device, not a field device. Some people use it in the field to measure SWR. Primarily, most hams view it as a shack device and therefore we're just gonna put it off to the side for now. The Chameleon unit comes in at $199 or $200 on the Chameleon website today. The MFJ unit comes in on their website at $399 or $400. The Rig Expert Stick uh, Pro I just saw on DX Engineering, I think for $450. So twice as expensive as the Chameleon Antenna SA1. 
Now, there's a lot more features that you can measure with these devices, either in your shack or in the field. And so I don't wanna cast that aside as irrelevant. It is relevant if that information is important to you. And that's really what I wanna talk about at this point in time. The SA1 from Chameleon is focused on one thing. It is operation in the field or in the shack rapidly upon measuring your SWR. That's what it focuses on solely, quickly, getting online, measuring SWR, and operating. And admittedly, when I have operated Backyard Portable and I have set up my coil antenna, I have used these two devices for one thing and one thing only. Even though they're capable of so much more, I've measured SWR, I've gotten SWR to an acceptable level, and I've operated. When I've operated POTA and I wanted to set up a coil antenna or I was out in the field cutting a wire antenna to length, guess what I did? I did one thing with these two devices. I measured SWR and adjusted my coil and cut my wire to length according to those SWR readings. Again, they could do so much more than that, and that's why they cost double of the Chameleon unit. The Chameleon unit does one thing. You turn it on, you get an immediate SWR reading, you click the dial, you dial into your uh, frequency that you want to operate it on, you connect your cable, and you check your SWR, you make the adjustment on your wire, on your coil, on your mag loop, you go operate. This is Half the cost of these units, because it focuses on one thing, it focuses on it well, checking your SWR and letting you see how that SWR measurement changes as you make adjustments to your antennas. Let me explain what's happening here and how I tune my mag loop using this analyzer in the shack. So the FX4CR and the analyzer is connected to my mag loop. My mag loop is 30 feet away from me in the attic space. And when I say that they're both connected, all I simply mean is that they're going into this switch right now. The switch is connected to the analyzer and listen, you heard the radio come to life. Now the radio is connected to the mag loop. Now back to the analyzer. Let me go back to this angle. I'm at 12.3. I'm on the analyzer. Now I'm going to go to the radio. All right, you saw the radio come to life and my SWR here goes to 19.9. It's because it's not connected to anything. Now I'm going to go back to the analyzer. So all I need to do at this point is use my remote control to turn the motor on uh, the capacitor shaft on my mag loop. And that's how I tune. See how quickly that came down to 1.2 to 1? That's ridiculous. So just to show you that again, we'll, we'll get far away from it there. We're at 10.8 to 1. Hit the tune button. Hit the tune button again. Now the jog is a shorter step. And I'm at 1, 2, 3 to 1. That's how I tune my mag loop in the shack with an analyzer. I just use my antenna switch back there and that lets me quickly go back and forth between my gear and get to perfect SWR so I can operate with my FX4CR. How about we go outside and play with some antennas backyard portable? Tuning the coil antenna is very similar across all the manufacturers. Of course, we're going to illustrate with the CHA PRV portable resonant vertical. I get my ground stake in the ground, attach the coil to it, attach my whip to it, and then get all of my radials set up. I already dial in the SWR because I want to illustrate some things for those of you who aren't familiar with these types of systems. You'll watch us step up adjust the coil and move away. Why do we do that? Well, let me show you why. Those of you who have picked one of these radios up as a child, it doesn't matter the type of radio that you picked up and you touch the antenna or you get your hand near the antenna, what happens? The signal comes in and out. And that's why you watch people when they're tuning a coil antenna, they'll make an adjustment, they'll step back away from the antenna system because your body being near the antenna interferes with it. You can see from my illustration here that my SWR is 1.29 to one and as I get near it and start to touch it, the SWR just goes all over the place. When I'm tuning my coil, my meter's in my hand, I can see it, you can't. So I'm just showing you now, as I move the coil, there are readings on the meter that are changing. That's how I know what to do. 
Okay, those were illustrations for those of you who've never tuned or seen anyone tune a coil antenna. You need to realize your body will interfere with the antenna system and you need to back away as you make coil adjustments to make sure you're getting accurate readings. And I needed you to understand that I'm actually seeing a reading on my SWR meter. That's why I put it on the table so you could watch it change. Now let's actually go through the process of tuning the antenna using the analyzer. So here I am, I dial in the frequency. This is what I want to operate on. It's what I'm going to tune my radio to. So that's what I want the analyzer reading. I make a minor adjustment on my coil. I step back away from the antenna system, take a look at my SWR, didn't get it quite where I wanted it. Go back for another adjustment and you do this as many times as you need to until you finally have exactly what you need for your reading. And that's how you tune a coil antenna system. And that Okay, on to the new content. Originally, I couldn't show this screen very well. You either need to get drastic with camera settings on poor quality cameras or buy really expensive cameras. And now I have a really expensive camera to show off just how good this screen is, backlit or not. Before we can demonstrate the plotting software, we need this cable. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can pick this up and it needs to be plugged into the top of the meter as well into the USB A port of our computer. Navigate to the page and select the executable file. Chameleon has a link on the product page for the analyzer and I'll leave a link in the description below. More than likely, you're going to have some challenges opening this because of your antivirus software. It'll go to your download file. You'll be asked the question, do you really want to download this? And then when you go to where your download files go and you execute it, you'll probably get an error message. Yeah, there it is. Windows doesn't want you to open this. You should only do this if you're comfortable and you understand what you're doing. I do. And I am. So I'm opening the file. And then I have additional steps that I need to take with my antivirus software to allow this executable file to operate on my PC. You do what you are comfortable with, not what I am. Open up the application and you can see in the top right hand corner, it is trying all the available COM ports to find a device to communicate with. And that's where we come back to our cable. You're going to take this cable and plug it into the very top port of the analyzer. And then you're going to go ahead and plug it into your USB A port so that the computer can read the analyzer and start to take advantage of the features that are located in the app. And as soon as I get plugged into USB-A, it stops searching and finds COM port 3. Do yourself a favor, navigate to the app page and read these basic instructions. This is a real simple app to use. If you follow these instructions, you'll have no problem whatsoever. You can use the predefined buttons to select a ham band to scan, or you can do what I'm doing here and type in the exact frequency that you want to scan for. I'm on my magnetic loop. I'm using my remote loop tuner from Chameleon, and I'm just scanning what my SWR is, where my sweet spot is on this high Q antenna, and that tells me right away. Next up, I tell it to do a scan of 10 meters through 160 just to see what will happen. You can see the number of points is 10. This is how many measurements it's taking across the entire plot. I'm going to cut this short because the end result is nothing. You, you can't see anything. I go back and I modify the number of points to 100, which extends the length of the scan. In other words, how long it takes to complete because it's doing more measurements. And then we actually see something worthwhile. We see what that high Q antenna looks like across the entire ham band spectrum. This is what we expect to see. I've flipped my antenna switch over to my CHA Portamast wire antenna. That Portamast flies the American flag, so as far as the HOA is concerned, it's a flagpole. They don't see it as an antenna mast as I do, and they don't see the wire antenna on it because that wire is virtually invisible, and that's why this is my favorite new antenna here in the HOA. Keep in mind when you're doing a full read of the entire ham band spectrum at 100 measurement points, it could take some time. So I've sped that up here for the video. I'm glad that I finally have a full reading of the SWR across the bands on this specific antenna. Keep in mind also, you can go frequency by frequency, actually band by band by choosing these predefined band buttons and get a quick reading on the particular band that you're focused in on. 
One final feature to point out, if you watch the screen on the analyzer and look at the data on the app, it's somewhat interactive. So a lot of the information on the app is also coming through on the screen of the analyzer. So you kind of have two areas to gather information from and make decisions about your antenna performance. So there you have it. Good gear, very focused on a specific task, does it very well. And now we have some new functionality to go with it. I hope you found this useful. I'll talk to you soon, friend 73.